Good. Hi, Rosa. Hello, Vivian. How are you? So wonderful. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> Prepared to travel through the solar system with you. Oh, we're going to go all the way from the sun all the way out to Pluto and beyond. <laughs> oh, that's, that are the trips that I like. Yes. yes. Especially, especially when I don't have to feel all the pain of being an astronaut inside of a suit, feeling all that, you know, trembling and louching and everything. We can travel with our imagination. These are the trips that I, I like the most. Me too. And we don't even have to wear diapers. Exactly. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> no, to me, the worst is not feel, not feel, not to feel the taste of uh, food. Oh. You know, when you're in space, you don't feel the taste. Oh, and yeah. that was something that I learned that told me, okay, I don't want to go to space. <laughs> I really don't want to go to space either. I have cross-country bus trips that take forever and you're squeezed in with lots of people. <laughs> it doesn't interest me at all. I'm no, no, no. <laughs> <I'm here. laughs> okay, so let, let's do our trip sitting in our offices. Excellent. <laughs> okay, so this one is called the pocket solar system. It's okay. A, it's a scale distance of the planets and other objects in our solar system. So okay. what I'd like to do, first of all, is to have students think about distances in our solar system and even just on a plain piece of paper have them say okay if the sun is at one end and pluto is at the other think about all the planets in a row and where do you think they would be distance wise from the sun so it, it helps starting with that it helps kind of remind students of the order of the planets and also just gives them lets them make an estimate of what they think the solar system looks like most students, I find, have spaced them pretty evenly throughout the solar system. But we're going to find out that that's not the case. So after we do a little bit of talking about the planets and other things in the solar system, like asteroids and the Kuiper Belt, which is where Pluto is, um, then we are able to start the pocket. We call it the pocket solar system. The only thing you need for the pocket solar system is a roll of cash register tape. Um, I can get away with usually about five to seven students easily. Um, before, the problem with this is when you get at the very center, it gets very rolly in it and it's um, uh, hard to manage. Uh, so, and I use this with students about age eight and up. Any younger and some of the actual folding is a little bit problematic. So I, I try and go with students eight and up. You can go younger if you have a small group but with a classroom, I wouldn't go under eight. So what I start with is you make a sheet of paper from fingertip to fingertip, and you can tear that off. So it's interesting to note that this is also the same distance, your fingertip to fingertip, when you spread them out as far as you can go, is the same distance as your head to your toes. No, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. It is, oh, that's awesome. It is really, it's a neat thing. If you think of Da Vinci's man um, that's out there, it's the same thing. Okay. Oh, I'll have to check that, you know. <laughs> it's good to check because then the students can measure their, themselves. So this is a solar system that's the length of the student. I love that. So I usually cut the ends off just to make them um, flat. This is um, my cooking show version, so I've already cut the ends off of this one. This is also as long as I am. So, um, and now we're going to start. On one end, on one side of this, you're going to write kind of small. You're going to write sun. And that's, I think you can see it. Just okay. Yeah. And on the other end, you can write, so I personally like to talk about the Kuiper belt, which is where Pluto um, live. So you can put Pluto slash Kuiper Belt. And Kuiper Belt is um, a large collection of basically comets that are at the edge of our solar system. We kind of consider the Kuiper Belt the edge of our solar system. There's a much larger cloud out there called the Oort Cloud, but that is much, much more distant. And Pluto is kind of, Pluto is one of the objects in the Kuiper Belt. So now our scale goes from the sun at the center 
and this would go all the way around. This would make orbits. These are the orbits. Of, that would be the orbit of Pluto, would be as, as um, long as you are, or as long as your arms are. So that's our scale. And we're gonna okay. take all the other planets in between, the Sun and Pluto, okay? Okay. All right, so, so is, is, this a, is this a new version? I remember that I learned to, to calculate the distance of the planets using an activity from you uh, that it was the solar system in a toilet paper. Yes, you could do it with toilet okay. paper. Too. Okay, okay. So I, 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 we, we started doing this uh, and having the students compare their, their vision. But uh, this idea, I think it's, uh, it's better. They complain about uh, being unecological. It is. So, right? yeah. You cannot reuse it. But I was thinking that uh, with this uh, uh, type of tape that you're using, teachers can later put that in the, the wall of the classroom and use it throughout the year to explore more the solar system with the students. Exactly. It's a really good one, too, for students to take home to talk to their parents about. Uh -huh. As interesting as it is to students, I think. Um, Adults often have more fixed ideas about where things are in the solar system. Mm -hmm. it's more of I do this with adults as often as I do students. Um, it's it's a bigger aha moment at the end for adults than it is even for students because mm -hmm. students are not so rigid in their thinking already. Often they they are open for many new ideas. So this is a it's not going to be what most people think the solar system looks like, um, but. Students sometimes don't even have those preconceived notions yet. Okay, so let's see. We're gonna, do, it's a pretty easy one to do. What you do first is you put the two ends together, fold it in half, and you just crease, make a crease halfway in the middle. Okay. Okay, now I don't know if this, so, and now we get them to make a prediction. Which planet do they think lies halfway between Pluto and the sun? Mm-hmm. And most students are going to guess Saturn or Jupiter, which is a very good guess because that's kind of in the middle of the eight planets. Um, and I don't know if this is actually going to translate um, into all the different languages, but in English, I, um, I have a way to remember this. If you put the sun at your head and Pluto at your feet, <laughs> The one that falls halfway in between, and you never even have to make a dirty joke, but the orbit that falls halfway <laughs> in between, they will, uh, they will get it right away, and they will probably not forget it. I love that. I never saw that one. I'll never forget it. <laughs> That's halfway between. Is that halfway between? In, I mean, is that joke? No, it's a, no, it's a, it's a, a different word. It's a different word. No, no, we got we lucked out on that one. Actually. But it works. People know English. It works. That <laughs> works. Okay, so Uranus is halfway between the Sun and Pluto. Um, now, for the next step, we fold it back again in half. Mm -hmm. Where was it, Uranus? And then we fold this in half again. It's a great time to bring in math for the younger students, talking about which fraction of the solar system we're talking where, you know, where they are, um, you know, now we're talking about quarters. So this is the solar system divided mm -hmm. into fourths. So there's only one planet between Uranus and Pluto. And that's an easy one, that's a giveaway. And that's Neptune. Neptune is here. So on this fold in between Uranus and the end, Pluto, is Neptune. Make mm -hmm. sure you all the right That end. was easy. That was easy. Yeah, that was, that was an easy one. All right. So, but now, which planet do you think is one quarter of the way out on this fold here, between, halfway between the Sun and Uranus, or one quarter of the way all the way out to the end? I, I want your help to mimic that information. What's your trick? <laughs> okay, I have another trick. Um, the way I remember this one, is that there is a sun at the center, S-U-N. There's also a sun at the end of the solar system is Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, S-U-N. So again, I don't know that it translates. <laughs> that's a nice one. But that's You're teaching me tricks to teach to the kids. Exactly, 
Exactly. So now Saturn is one quarter of the way mm -hmm. between the Sun and Pluto, which is kind of interesting because these are the last three planets in the solar system. I often will have on the board a list of the planets in order. Um, it helps students kind of think about I get them to help me make that list, but then we put it up so that we can talk about. But mm -hmm. Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are the last three planets, which means that everything else has to fit in this first quarter. Mm -hmm. That's surprising. Um, Very difficult. So now you can throw the rest of it over your shoulder, and you're only working with this one quarter of the solar system. So now again, we fold the sun up to Saturn, and we make a crease. I carry this stuff with me on the airplane. I can't tell you how many times I do this. <laughs> oh, that's a nice idea. I do it all the time. Um, so between the sun and Saturn, uh, halfway between is another planet, and it's the biggest planet of all. And I'm sure you're going to guess. You don't have a mimic for that one. I don't. Now, now we just have to kind of start remembering. OK. But it does just keep going in, which is a nice thing. So halfway between Saturn and the Sun is Jupiter. Um, mm -hmm. Which is still amazing. I mean, you have all the giants there, no. and you still didn't touch the rocky ones. We haven't even gotten to the four closest planets yet, right? These are all, now we have put on there all of the big, gassy and icy planets out there. So they're really, really far away from the Sun when you think about it. Because all of the rest of the planets are going to have to fit in this eighth now of the solar system. Okay, this one's even trickier because the next we fold, sorry, we fold it up to Jupiter here. And the next thing halfway between the Sun and Jupiter isn't even a planet. Think of what else lies between Jupiter and the Sun. Maybe something full of rocks? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Asteroid belt. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and you can just put A, B on there if you're rushed for time, or just go ahead and put asteroid belt right there. And no sign of the rocky planets yet. No, nothing. No, all of the planets that we love most of all <laughs> have not even shown up yet. Um, okay, so, so this, you can talk about like the ice line, where things, um, uh, where planets are forming and why we think the large planets formed far away, why we think the gassy, uh, the rocky planets formed close up. So, all right, here we go. We're going to keep folding sun up to the asteroid belt. This gets, um, there's not getting a, very scary, very scary, very, very hot. <laughs> I'm, feeling, yeah, I'm feeling packed already. <laughs> yeah, one thing to note on this scale, you wouldn't be able to see any of the planets. Um, they would be much too tiny. It shows you kind of how much space there is out in space. And the sun would be smaller than a grain of sand really really tiny um and it's if you're using the same scale for distances and sizes okay. exactly exactly so if you, if i might uh, interrupt just for a little bit since this is going to be watched uh, by teachers and this is something that bothers me a lot which is the fact that um you see in many uh, books textbooks they do the solar system so and so. So they don't respect distances and they don't respect uh, sizes. And to me, this is very wrong. I'm very fundamentalist about that. If you cannot represent properly the size, the differences in sizes, don't represent it at all. Right. But don't do it so and so. No, either you respect it or you don't and you put every object, object in the same size. Yes. The same goes for the distance. Don't do it more or less. You know, use two scales, that's fine, not a problem. Inform right. your students you're using two scales, or don't use anything. Yes. You know, but be careful, don't accept the more or less, because this is one of the problems of mankind, not having a sense of scale. And one of the reasons is the textbooks, is the images that do it more or less, because artistically it's very difficult to do it. Yeah. So if you have to, use the whole wall of your classroom to represent the sun, mm -hmm. and so you can have things at the proper scale, but respect it, in yeah. particular if you are in primary school. Absolutely. Sorry to interrupt you, but I think this is uh, something that is important to share. It is. It is because we all grow up with the wrong idea of exactly, exactly. Sizes. Yeah, exactly. That's why this is such an aha 
oh wow, I didn't, I didn't even think mm -hmm. of the distances. And and to be fair, it's pretty empty. So there's a lot of empty space. Mm -hmm. So representing that is not as artistically um, exciting sometimes, and it's hard to represent the inner planets that are very close to the sun and the outer planets that are very far away. But it is so. We didn't reach the Earth or the Moon yet, which is so close. And yeah. st still, it takes so long to get there. Can you imagine going out to Pluto? It's no. such a well, journey, huh? I know. Amazing. And we just got to see it. What did it take? About 11 years, maybe, to get there? To get to, to, Pluto. to Pluto. Yeah, it was something like that. And you would either, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember exactly, but um, it does. It takes a long time. That's the fastest spacecraft mm -hmm. we have. <laughs> it's good. <Yeah. laughs> okay, all right, back to our pocket solar system. So now we have the asteroid belt, which is one, uh, I think we're up to one sixteenth of the way out. So now up to one thirty second. If you fold the sun up to the asteroid belt, it's my favorite planet of all, is the red planet. Mars. Yep. So Mars is the first of the rocky planets we're getting to, which is amazing. Um, we are, and it's also the farthest out uh, of all of our rocky planets. And this next step is the one that is the trickiest of all. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to fold the sun to Mars. You could do this facing it. And then you're going to leave it folded and fold it one more time up to Mars. That's going to leave you with one, two, three lines, which is very fortuitous because there are three planets that fit between the Sun and Mars. Mm -hmm. And that one is Mercury, Venus, and Earth. So I haven't written them out, but you can probably see that there. Mercury, Venus, and Earth. Mm -hmm. So everything packed together. Everything so close. These are all of our rocky planets right here, right next to the sun. This is Earth, and we know how bright the sun is for us here. But imagine how dim the sun would be, even on Saturn. Even on Saturn, but imagine all the way out to Neptune. That sun is so, so far away. So amazing. So it's amazing. Incredible. So I don't know if you can see the whole thing, but it's so incredible. Then you can keep this with you. You have a reference to distances anytime at your, and everyone has their very own scale because it's as big as they are. So it's a personalized version. Um, and that's, that's pretty much the end of it. And you can take this anywhere you want. I mean, it's a, it is a pretty interesting thing to note how close we are to the sun and how far away the gas giant planets are and thinking about space travel and so things. There was one thing that you did in the toilet paper activity, which I kind of liked, which was um, you said, okay, take one little foil, and if the sun is in the border, uh, I think you count five and you put the earth here. Yes. Um, and uh, I think that is very helpful. If you start with that, yeah. you can have, uh, it's, an, it's an option. You can, you can, now I know, you know, you cut this size, and uh, then you place the sun and the earth, give it to the students, divide them in groups, and ask them to make their guesses. Ah, that's a great okay. idea. So and uh, what will happen is that, uh, uh, every, actually, if you have several rows, you won't use this uh, size for them. Don't do it. Just give them the row, and they will do their distribution according to their own view. Exactly. Then you can compare the different groups. You can have them discuss among themselves what they think try to convince each other and usually they start shifting towards the correct answer and then you show the correct one and then you show how to do it and i think that for that uh, i mean i learned that with you guys with uh, the other activity which i think it's a, a very uh, good companion to this uh, activity so that you invite the kids to think a little bit before you give them the solution on how they do that I, you know, it's a, an amazing activity. Yeah, that's great. That's a really good way to start it in a classroom. That's, that makes a lot of sense. Another thing I like to do with this one is to um, take a, one of the nearby stars that has planets around it and make at the same scale ah. 
um, a, a second one, often like um, the uh, Trappist that they just discovered. Most of those are right in here. It's really interesting. So to make it at the same scale, um, after I've made my own, make a, a solar system that is a different star's solar system and, and talk about the, why the habitable planets would be close to the star like they are in our own solar system. Yeah, so this is something that uh, we are learning and I think it's uh, kind of complicated to the exo exoplanet scientists why they find planets as big as Jupiter close to their star as Mercury is or you know other other intriguing uh, uh, systems uh, that are completely different than ours so we're just scratching the surface on how these these systems form you know I love yeah, this that. is beautiful i i like this idea of uh, doing comparisons i never thought of that that is really very good idea very nice you can find it online you can just see they will have um, comparisons of the earth's orbit compared to the planets mm -hmm. that they just found um, very interesting. Yeah, it's really interesting. Oh, now it makes me wonder, do you think life there will have arms that stretch to the size of their solar system? <laughs> Aha! Aha! <laughs> That's a question to ask. <laughs> so maybe that will define how the, the, the beings there are going to be. Huh? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> planets maybe they're very small beings <laughs> exactly oh but then you know we do have smaller beings mm -hmm. in our planet whose arm doesn't stretch to the size of the solar system so we have to think again <laughs> do you think that if an ant would put uh, would stand and stretch her the, their arms the same would happen I don't have any idea. I wonder if... Aha! Another research topic for next session. Yes! We have to do some research on that. <laughs> well, Vivian, let me share my window uh, just a little bit Please. because uh, I want uh, to, to show uh, to the audience... Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. The Galileo Teacher Training Program uh, page, right? That's all you're seeing or you're seeing everything? No, just... There's just that page. Just that, okay. So in here, we have, uh, um, in the resources, we have one tab that's called ASP GTTP webinars. Yes. And uh, all the past ones are in here. Right. And you see here, we have this live uh, pocket solar system activity. And uh, when you get he here, and these are stored, you can always refer back to this, uh, to this activity. The link will shift to the, the, to the link where we are housing the, um, uh, the, the, this recording. And in here you found, find the activity per se in English and in Portuguese as well. And uh, the materials are in editable format, so if uh, any teacher would like to have access to these to translate it to their, their language, they just need to talk to us and contact us to, so that we'll find a way uh, for them to do, to do so. So in here you find uh, in the ASP GTTP webinars, you find all the, the, the past uh, webinars and uh, the different uh, activities that we have been sharing, the translations to Portuguese. So you find all, all of this for you to explore. Okay. Wonderful. So Wonderful. I will stop sharing here. Okay. And I guess that's it, right? Thanks, Rosa. This was a blast as usual. Okay. That was great. That was great. Even so we see each other next time. Awesome. The next one, let's uh, remind here our audience, it's going to be in June. Let me remember the, the date. It's going to be in June. Do you, do you have the date with you? I can't seem to probably, find it. Probably find it. Hmm. Okay, so we will announce uh, yeah. uh, in our regular social media. Keep alert uh, for the next chapter of this uh, ASP GTTP. Great program. Thank you. For making Thank you, Vivian. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon. So, talk soon. I think you can stop recording.